what is going on everybody i hope you're doing well i'm sorry that i haven't uploaded in the last few days on my normal schedule i've been unbelievably busy i've had a lot of family stuff going on and i just haven't really had the time to make uh, any videos and it kind of made me reflect on you know a lot of different techniques and a lot of different things and my whole kind of journey as a whole and i just basically wanted to almost i wouldn't say cover old ground but i'd say just basically give you some insight into entry confirmation and just simplifying it in a way that i remember finding incredibly helpful to me just when i was first starting off and how simple that can actually be and also talking about things like support and resistance and why whether you're using support and resistance whatever the the level is except uh what the level is itself it's not actually that important. And so I want to show you why that is. And I want to show you some examples of levels plotted on your charts, just to show you that levels really are not everything. And, you know, it's not as easy as just plotting a level on the charts, but that doesn't necessarily mean that things have to become harder. It doesn't mean that things need to be more complicated and, um, you know, necessarily more you know, overly kind of ambiguous. Okay, so I hope that you are interested in hearing more about that. This is not going to be a long video whatsoever. I do just want to say before we get started as a main thing, if you do have a particular idea for a piece of content, please do let me know because at the moment, I am going through a bit of a, I guess you could call it the equivalent of writer's block, um, just with content, you know, um, I have gone through this phase before it happens, you know, sometimes you have loads of ideas coming to you other times, you know, less, or, uh, less or so. So I'm going through one of the those times at the moment where I'm just not it's not all coming uh, as clear you know it's difficult for me to you know remember all of the things that you guys types of things you'd want to see and all the stuff that I've already talked spoken about or maybe I should talk about it in a different way etc 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 but just please if you do have an idea let me know in the comment section below and also I would appreciate it if you like this video supported the channel it really really means a lot to me and also if you want to learn more about all the techniques I discuss on this channel along with all of the other elements that go into my personal trading and all the students trading in the psych effects academy then i highly recommend checking out the link in the description for that so i want to start off by talking about levels okay if i was to close my eyes and get a horizontal line so i'm closing my eyes i'm just going to randomly place a line there in case we've got a line down there and then randomly place the line up here okay randomly place a line there Okay, so these are random places in the chart that I have marked out levels. Now, what you'll notice is that we have got almost perfect seeming levels marked out here. We've got a level here being respected here. It's being respected right here, here, level. I mean, literally these levels are just getting respected over and over and over again. And, you know, if you guys ever watch some um, some news releases or not even necessarily even news releases, but just sometimes in the news and the kind of general consensus about technical analysis in general is a lot of people will say stuff like oh, technical analysis doesn't work. It's all bullshit, all of this type of stuff. And, you know, I think part of the major reason for that, amongst other reasons, but one of the major reasons relating to this is because you can plot anything you want on past data and make it look good. And this is a perfect example of that. You know, you can see times where price is respecting it and that's all very well and good. But it dismisses one of the key points. And the key point is, how do you know which level is going to hold and when? Which basically means that it's not enough just to be looking at levels. Now, if we take this one step further and we look at how market structure moves. So, for example, we have higher highs, higher lows. High, high, high lows create high highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, etc., etc. Now, some people will mark on, uh, you know, demand levels drawn from the last down candle, for example, before an up move. Other people will use the actual low itself. Other people will use the low coming from the wick down here. Other people will use just a standard retest level or bias level. Some people will highlight this entire zone. Whatever the actual technique is, most of the most of these levels are essentially places where we're anticipating volume to be in the market. We're anticipating that when price comes down there or back to that level, that there's going to be enough, there are going to be enough residual orders for us to, you know, execute some sort of trade and get a different size move. Now, obviously, the size of the move depends on the type of trade you are and lots of other variables, but just in terms of levels alone. One of the key rules of thumb to be aware of is that the, the volume is going to be somewhere here, okay? Whether you draw on a demand level or this or that, or whatever it is, 
the volume is going to be somewhere within here. And so when I see people who are obsessing about levels and going, oh, can you show me how to use this specific level or this specific level? It's not so much about the level. The level is actually fairly irrelevant. What is what is relevant to me? What are the two most relevant factors? Well, for me, it's the overall direction. OK, and that doesn't necessarily mean the overall trend. It's more of a shift uh, and a displacement for me in the way that I particularly like to perceive things. And then it's confirmation of that direction. And so translated into actual trading terms, this is basically just going to be directional bias for direction. And then confirmation is entry, essentially, because all an entry is, you know, unless we're using a limit order or something like that, confirmation is uh, an entry confirmation is simply confirming that direction that you've already gauged on that higher time frame. And often it can actually be done without looking at levels at all. Now, to add insult to injury, well, that's probably the wrong way to put it. But when you are breaking down these levels further, there are other elements to kind of look and get involved with. For example, you know, if you've got a level like this, you've got to look at, okay, how was the level formed? Was it literally just a standard level like this formed in a kind of classic uptrend? Was price kind of messing around for a while, then it came down, then it came back up, and now it's coming back down there? Is price kind of coming up, coming down, breaking down, coming all the way back, and then doing something like this? And so the real question isn't, OK, the levels, because anyone can draw the levels on. It's about applying a three step process. Now, one of the things that I've noticed from, you know, creating videos on YouTube for quite a while now is the occasional comment and emphasis on occasional uh, comment of people saying, oh, this is all just hindsight. You know, it's all very easy to draw in hindsight. And this is essentially what I'm trying to address kind of subliminally in this video as well, because Yes, hindsight on its own, as I, as I showed you, is very deceptive because you go back in time, you can draw a level on anywhere, you can make yourself seem like the best trader in the world, but realistically, you're not actually a trader, you're just basically an artist. And whilst I'm a massive fan of art, that's a completely separate topic entirely. Um, it's not what trading is about. And so to kind of bring this full circle here, this is why I'm always talking about applying a three-step process. Number one, being directional bias. Number two, being area of interest, like so. And then number three, being the entry trigger. Now, the reason that it's okay to look over hindsight from this perspective is because you are looking at price in the same way that it would have appeared to you if it was in real time. It's one thing to go back in price and be like, okay, cool, I can see that, you know, this level was respected right here, broke, sweet, and then got up there. But that's not how you would have been thinking about it in real time. In real time, if you were here, how do you know that this is not just going to come straight back in and continue going up? You need to have a set of rules. You need to have a systemized way of looking at things in order to make an educated guess, because that's all we're doing at the end of the day is we're making educated guess, guesses. And so it's about, OK, cool. How do I, what's my first directional cue? Am I using market structure? Am I using some sort of indicator? Am I using uh, some sort of higher uh, directional, um, higher time frame range or something like that? What is it that's gauging my direction? Once you've done that, you've completed that, then you move on to step two, but you're doing it in the order that you would see it in real time. And this is when hindsight can become an asset because anything else, you know, as everybody in the comments will be, you know, sometimes says, this is very rare, but, you know, sometimes there's always some people. This is where the kind of different difference comes in. And uh, this is something that not really a whole lot of people talk about. But uh, bring it back to levels in particular or area of interest, because when I say levels, all I'm talking about is area of interest right here is you want to get clearer on exactly what constitutes a level for you. You know, for example, I get the question a lot, you know, what does, you know, how do I find good uh, this type of level or a good retest level or a good demand level, or, you know, whatever it is, how do I find a good, you know, insert level here? How do I find a good one? And um, the question is coming from a good place because you want to actually find the levels that are going to you know be really good and be really effective but there's also a flaw because no matter what level you pick 
there are always going to be times where it doesn't work. And so the only focus should be on, okay, what is the highest probability, not guaranteed, but what is the highest probability? What gives the, a level a higher odds? And then if you enjoy learning about technical analysis, because not everybody really enjoys it, if they are really honest with themselves, they just like the idea of money. And that's, again, a topic for another video. If you want to see a video on that, let me know. But it's about really understanding the how the levels basically interact with what you were doing and if you want to if you want to know sorry that's what i was just kind of getting onto was understanding why something works for example right here in this example we will have a small liquidity pool below here and assuming that we had that direction right then maybe this could be something around here that could be quite interesting for us to potentially get involved in to take this particular move higher right here okay but there's when you look at this in hindsight, you know, it's very easy to be like, oh, this level was respected. That's it. And there's actually a lot more going on than that. What did these, what did this rely on? It relied on this overall direction being having a tendency to go to the upside. It also relied on this having taken out the liquidity here and then having that confirmed by a larger move that broke this structure over here, up here. And then it returned all the way down here. What confirmation did we get down there to then push price higher? And so, yes, hindsight on its own, completely useless. Support and resistance on its own, completely useless. It's about how it is injected into a three-step formula, okay? And that's really all it is because after you have a three-step formula, it doesn't become about trying to find the best one straight off the bat. It becomes about how well can you go ahead and back test it without risk? How well can you keep a journal of all your results? All of these sorts of things these are going to be the powerful elements that are just absolutely priceless when it comes to learning, improving, and providing the best possible um, kind of starting points for a strategy. You know, equally down here, it's like, how do you know at this point in time that this is going to go up? How do you know at this point in time it's going to go up? Wrong question, because you never know for sure. It's about, okay, does this fit my rules? Does this fit my rules? Because as soon as it fits your rules, the whole idea is that you should take it. And that will only be something that you can solidify and be clear on once you've gone ahead and back tested. If you don't back test, you're guessing. If you're listening to me, if you're listening to anybody online or anyone anywhere in life, in anything, trading or anything, and you just assume you take their word for it and you don't actually implement it and try it in a way that doesn't you know, put risk to yourself, then that's just ignorant. You need to Take the time to actually invest and you know in yourself and learn and understand the dynamics and see, okay, cool, let me test this out. Does this work? And in terms of trading, that means back testing at least at the very least 100 times without any risk, no, you know, not risk any money or anything like that. Journaling all those results, I like to use Google Sheets and then being like, right, cool, has this worked? Does this not work? And then you kind of pivot and you keep going and keep going tweak one thing at a time you become a scientist until you've got something that you're happy with and then it becomes about execution and these are all things i cover in immense depth in the psych effects academy i'm always upgrading the content there i'm sharing all of my processes with you just to show you how i have kind of refined all of these different elements down because I see it all the time. People ask me about what the best level is and how to check if a level is going to work uh, and all this sort of stuff. And we never know for sure when a level is going to work, but it takes a lot of the stress off when you realize that what you really need to do is come down to the charts, go one, two, three, step one, step two, step three. Is it a yes? Is it a no? The more binary, meaning the more uh, you can get it towards a yes or a no type answer, the better off you are going to be. Okay. And so I know it's kind of been a bit of a weird video. I've kind of gone in kind of funny ways uh, about how I've kind of explained everything, but I really, really hope that that has kind of shed a little bit of light for you on exactly what goes into trading and specifically levels in particular and why levels aren't really that important because just to quickly recap, most of the volume will be found somewhere within this. And obviously price will never look this clean. Okay. But there's little microcosms and little small little areas that you can get into that will make it even more um, in depth and detailed. But when I was first starting out, I was not looking at price 
in even this much depth. I was using a basic break and retest system, trend following, market structure only. And that was absolutely fine for me. It was only because I actually really enjoyed learning about all these other things. I wanted to understand more, but I began getting into kind of more complex patterns like this and beyond and combining multiple timeframes. But it didn't start off like that. I found everything way too complicated to, uh, to begin with. It was just a complete nightmare, if I'm being honest. But that's me, you know, and uh, and so, yeah. And also, guys, just a little side note as well, just before we uh, finish up the video. I'm thinking of starting another YouTube channel where I talk about long term investing, because this is something that I've really been interested in for a while. And it's not actually going to be from the perspective of me being, you know, trying to teach you guys. It's more a shared learning experience, really, because, you know, building long term wealth and, you know, investing and, you know, having a, a, a good kind of portfolio and stuff like this for the long term is a very, very powerful concept to me and i'm very interested in it and I just, i've just been thinking about making some videos of as i'm learning about something i share that guy i share that with you and then you can you know get hopefully get some value from it and tell me if you like it if you don't like it um and you know hopefully go on that journey of learning with me and you can see the process of how i like to learn and all of these sorts of things i thought that might be quite a fun sort of idea um, but let me know um i'm more than happy to uh to discuss with you guys in the comments some other suggestions if you've got any about content whatever the hell it is um but yeah guys thank you so much as always i appreciate each and every single one of you every single day and uh and yeah i very much look forward to seeing you in the next video please go ahead and drop a like i would deeply appreciate it and there is also going to be a uh, either a playlist or a video that pops up on the screen right now that i know you're going to absolutely love okay so take it easy guys and i'll see you on the next video